Friends, thank you for watching my channel. I just want to remind you if you need wallpaper, go to www.wallpaperboulevard.com. Tell them Spencer sent you. In fact, if you use my hashtag, Spencer Colgan is wallpaper, they'll be sure to give you a 10% off at your checkout. No matter how much you order, they have a wide selection of wallpaper. Check it out. This is Spencer Colgan from Spencer Colgan is Wallpaper. And today we're wallpapering the new office in South Tampa. I'm hanging newspaper print by Magnolia Homes. It's a 54 inch commercial vinyl. I gotta tell you, it's one of the best quality commercial vinyls I've ever handled. Uh, we're putting it over semi-gloss latex paint and the paint has been up for a while. It's a strong substrate. And so we put our paste on the back of this spun backing and we let it book for 10 minutes. I'm gonna put it up in the entrance to the office. It's gonna look gorgeous. A Couple of things you wanna know when you're hanging this. You wanna have a heat gun available in case you need to bend the wall covering back into place. Secondly, we know commercial vinyl gets double cut. And so the instructions, always reading the instructions, indicate that one and a half inches overlap and then you cut through that bleed. When you overlap, it's called bleed. The part that remains is called live. So let's get to it. The things I like to do with commercial vinyl is take your time. Can you come in close, cameraman? Here's the thing. With commercial vinyl, it's such a good product, but it's thick. And it's not gonna lay down for you right away. And so, you're tempted to rush the process by just smoothing it out quick. You come back five minutes later, you got, you got bubbles again. And the reason why is because you have the air escaping from the liquid that's trying to dry and it's escaping first out from behind the paper and then into the environment. So your first inclination is to rush, got to move, right? Production. A lot of people comment on my channel. Yeah, if I only had the time to do all of this. Well, I got news for you. Charge more and take less jobs. Because if you want to make black wallpaper perfect, if you rush it, you're going to get callbacks. Number one, the seams. If you don't cut your seams on a right angle with the wall on which the paper is hanging, you're going to get angular slicing. If you could just come behind me, I'm gonna show something to the people. So if you take a look at the angle of my blade, it's square with the wall, meaning it's 90 degrees. It's not like this. It's not like that. I'm exaggerating an error that's commonly made with commercial vinyl. And you'll see it on black wallpaper. If your blade is not 90 with the wall and it's, it's 20 degrees off, what you're doing is, you ever sharpen a pencil? Okay, perfect example. Watch this. Take this pencil out. Watch this. At 90 degrees, I'm shaving nothing. I have to make an angle. And what happens? I'm making a point, right? Trying to make a point here. If I come straight down, my wallpaper has a factory edge. If I turn the blade like this, I'm sharpening pencils. Or if I go like this, worse if I go like this if you rush you get a good you're going to get a white seam the best case scenario is to do your best using a straight edge and you cut straight against the blade without cutting on an angle except the 90 degree angle so if you if you want to Book your material well. 
you can kill two birds with one stone by wiping it down. If you got paste on the uh, front of the product, if you're using a pasting machine, or if your table got paste on it, look what I'm doing. I'm doing two things here. One, I'm cleaning it. All I'm gonna have to do is wipe it down when I get it on the wall. Secondly, and more importantly at this point, is I'm mashing the wallpaper backing together. In other words, I'm getting the air out. I'm putting pasted backing against pasted backing. And if you do that diligently, even though it's a lot of work, you'll find that you'll have less bubbles when you put it on the wall. Because the bubbles are coming out now. The air is coming out. Did you ever buy a brand new mop and you put it in the water? You, you have a bucket of water, you put the mop in the water, right? What happens to the mop? It jumps up, right? Why is that? Just like your body would float because it has air in it, that mop is loaded with little pockets of air that the water has not yet penetrated and therefore pops up out of the bucket. Well, these fibrous nooks and crannies in this backing trap air. And when you push it together, the force of your hand and sponge forcing it out. It's forcing the liquid in, air out. Okay, I'll see you on the next one. Now, the second sheet is the, uh, the test sheet, so to speak. In this sense, if you are crooked here between your first and your second sheet, you're crooked for the rest of the, of the installation. Please listen to this, probably the most important thing during this video. With 54 inch goods, uh, it's a little beyond the capacity of the human body to control 54 inch goods, especially for a small person. So let's face it, 48 would be ideal, that's here. But 54, here's what happens. The tendency is for inches 48 to 54 to be two to three inches down imperceptibly from your left side where you have more control therefore i highly suggest when you're hanging this wall covering that you get a bench ladder that is a 48 inch wide bench upon which you stand and hang your wallpaper so that you can do this. Being aware that the forward edge will droop because you don't have control over it while you're joining the left side, be aware that you have to check the right side before you make your cuts. This is vinyl. You can be off two inches and not have any buckles in here. Yes, you can be off two inches and your wallpaper hinges, it does this. Man, guess what? It's like a bedspread. You ever put a bedspread on and you're like, why is the line going crooked? Well, stretch it out a bit, just a bit. There's no buckles, but you stretch it out a bit and then it straightens out. Same thing with commercial vinyl. If you don't have, you see, it's easy now. I have writing here. So if you just take a look, if you don't mind, come in. I have a vertical repeat and a horizontal repeat so you see this writing here this is your opportunity follow me here follow me here follow me here follow me here okay where are we this is your opportunity okay so it's right here again so if you have a laser level or a four foot level and you put it here and you go across over here Guess what? This should be level. Now, if you make the mistake, which somebody I know 
made many years ago. You won't be aware of that because you think you know everything and you're down two inches. But you don't see any buckles. Buckles means you're off, you know. Buckles like wrinkles. So the only way to do it is to have in mind that the forward edge droops and you need to make sure that it's up. Now, I committed a sin up there. I measured from the ceiling down to this is your opportunity. That's not the way to do it. But I know my ceiling is level. I have a drop ceiling here. I have, it is level, and therefore I'm judging the distance from the ceiling to my reference point, which is this is your opportunity, and it is equidistant on the right side as it is over here. But don't you do that unless you know that your ceiling is perfectly level, which it probably isn't. So don't do it that way. If you have a laser level or a snap line or whatever, you can simply go at the lower part, in the middle and at the top to make sure that your vertical repeat, I'm sorry, your horizontal repeat, that is the image here, the image here, and the image here are all level, perfectly level. Okay? And so now we will do the double cut. And what I was doing is taking my, my Microsoft, my Microsoft, my microfiber cloth, which is the best, let me repeat that, the best tool to clean your wallpaper and get all the, now watch, I'm just gonna tell you. What would you, what muscles would you rather use when cleaning commercial vinyl? Your arms plus your back plus your legs? Or, let me show you. Or just this. I can tell you, use a bunch of muscles so that when you go home, you have energy to do other things. I'll see you on the next one. Now, when I was joining the material, I went, to, these are newspaper clippings. That's the theme of the wallpaper, right? And the instructions tell me to overlap one and a half inches. Well, unless you have your underlap marked off, you really don't know how much you're overlapped. So that instruction is really not helpful, okay? It's really not, unless you would to do this, watch this. You put a laser line on the underlap, and then you put the overlap one and a half inches away from the laser line. That would be the way to do it, but we don't do that. So we match it up by reading that these things are, that they're, that the words continue. Look, Chicago, see that? See Chicago here? So we have to have Chicago here as well. See how she matches up there? And then you gotta do it here and here. But watch the genius in this manufacturing. Fortunately, they consult with paper hangers. You really don't have to worry too much about that because where would you cut this? Look what I have near my edge. Look at this. You see this steady black line, this twilight zone here? It's only interrupted sporadically throughout the vertical drop once, twice, three times, four, not much. So I'm gonna make my double cut, not through the letters, that would be silly. I may not be perfect in the middle, you know, if the wool has a little belly to it, guess what? It pushes out on the wallpaper and it messes up the connection, believe it or not, right? You ever see a very heavy person with a striped shirt on, right? You ever watch Bert and Ernie when you were a kid? And now uh, they have those striped shirts and Ernie's a little fat, right? And so it obscures the, uh, the stripes on his shirt. Well, if the wall has a little bulge here, a little bulge there, guess what? At the very top on a long sheet, you're off. So. We don't cut through letters when we don't have to. And here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna cut through Twilight Zone. 
because if we're not perfectly connected, it's inconsequential because I'm cutting through black space. Can somebody just write incredible or something like genius or something to that effect? If you don't mind, if you do, don't worry about it. So I have my laser on the black because black is gonna always meet up with black. But Chicago is not gonna meet up with black if it's off. You get it, you understand what I mean. Okay, so let's do it. And so I go to my, lately, my go-to blade or edge. This is when you wanna go cut, because I can't find it. Not even in my back pocket. I could edit this. Where is my, do you happen to see a black blade? You can still. So I'm gonna use my favorite. This is, cause it fits right in my pouch. Now, ask me if you're interested in the Spencer Colgan is wallpaper, wallpapering kit, in which I'm going to provide you the most essential tools to hang wallpaper. And you're looking at them basically. It's just, it's a pouch kit. So let me know if you're interested. Okay, so we have our laser line and we have the benefit of owning the place so we can ship the lights. And so you can see the benefit of the green laser line, right? But since it's green and it goes 300 feet, we can use it with the lights on too. And I can see it. Uh, invest in a green light, not the uh, red one. I've used the red, but don't use it. You can't see the line. Okay, so with a new blade, now remember you're going through two layers of vinyl and you remember in the first part of the video, I showed you that it's essential to keep the blade at a 90 degree angle with the wall meaning you're not shaving a pencil but you're cutting through wallpaper if you think of wallpaper as a cake what would happen if you cut the cake on an angle right same thing you're going to see the sides of it so you want to cut straight through it so that doesn't happen. Now, if you do take your blade off of the wall during the cut, you want to make sure that you resume the cut exactly where you left off. And if you're doing it halfway, you may as well get a new blade. Okay. Take your time with the cut. You don't have to be a cowboy or a cowgirl and try to, you know, show off and go fast because your thing, your edge will slide. You wanna make sure if you're gonna take your time on anything, make sure it's during the double cut because you gotta be good on this, okay? okay. And you gotta get down near the floor because Raj, would you mind coming in close? I want to show them the dynamic here. This is already uh, heated up and in the groove. Very important that it is. Because now I can rest my edger against that groove. I can feel it. It's stopping the edger. It's stopping it. Now, watch this. As I come down, I'm going to change the angle of my hand if I have thick woodwork, so I'm gonna just do it for you. Imagine thick woodwork, not a cove base, 
And so what happens is I got to bring this edger out so my blade doesn't take off on me. I'm trapping the blade against my edger and I got woodwork. Think about woodwork now. You raise your hand up. See that? Because if you don't raise your hand up, you're gonna hit trim and it's going to change the cut. Okay, now let's see how I did. Now, if it gets stuck, I didn't do a good job. It's coming off, very nice. Very nice. Okay, now let's go under the wallpaper and get our overlap and you can see that the manufacturer knows what he's talking about when he says an inch and a half because that's what we have an inch and a half okay okay i failed to make a good clean cut here okay come in close please all right if this happens to you this is what i want you to do I perforated it, I didn't cut it, I failed to do a good job. Now watch what I'm doing. I'm coming out. Don't go toward the sheet, here's why. You can always take more off, right? And that's where I stopped there, okay. Okay, so we gotta trim that. We gotta trim that. So we'll trim it but you could blow it, you could blow it big time. Which I obviously blew it, I hate, I hate that. Okay, let's do it. Come on now, come on. Okay, okay. It's, uh, but just press hard enough. It was my worst nightmare when I first started cutting commercial vinyl and simply not penetrating both layers. No problem. Okay, so we did good. Now let's examine our, our, uh, our work. And I, I'm actually glad that that happened. Here, here's why, I'm gonna show you. Let's move real quick. I'm gonna show you something. Because everybody can do this. Okay. For the most part, this is already perfect, but it's not really perfect yet. Okay, I know it looks good, but let's say it didn't, watch this. Here's what you do. Let's say you guys, you did what I did in five different places. Here's what you do. Here's what you do, and you do it real quick. And you never tell the customer. You always smile at the customer. Hey, how you doing? Especially when they're standing right behind you. Just keep working. Because when you stop, you look guilty. You look guilty. Do you ever have wallpaper fall on your head while you're installing it? I turn around and tell them, this is supposed to happen. It's part of the installation. They believe it. They actually believe it, man. You gotta say it with a straight face. This is supposed to be like this. I know it looks silly. Oh no, go ahead, do what you gotta do. Okay, now, here's what you do to rectify your error. Yeah. Okay, there's my boo-boo right there. Watch this. Go around, don't overdo it. Nice. Okay, we didn't have a big boo boo, but that's what you do. Beat it up. Nice and nice. That's all. And you're matched. That's it. Oh, we got another one down here. Okay. This goes for. Oh, I'm not even touching it. Do you see it coming together? Look at that. Look at that. It's coming together. Look at that. Oh man, I can't believe that. I'm gonna change my name to Magic Wallpaper Star. Look at that. Little heat, folks. I'm glad you got that on video because 
That's all you need. Here, let's do this one. Can they see that one? Right here. Uh, where are they? Right here. Check it out. I'm just going to heat it up like this. I'm going to watch what I'm doing. You're actually relaxing it so much so that it just mends together. Okay? Is that good? Okay, how's it looking in the camera? Alright, just keep going. Alright, I don't see it anymore, do you guys? Alright, and that's how you do it. That's it. That's what I wanted to show you. You can show them the uh, the rest of the seam. That's it. Now, if you completely fail, because you got nervous and it's your first or second time, let it dry, get your black water pencils out and just, just go in there, okay? But you'll get it, you'll get it. Trust me, you'll get it. And if you can't get it, just pay me. I charge 2,000 a day uh, if you're within 50 miles and a little more if you're beyond. Just kidding. Okay, I'll see you on the end of it when we show you the whole thing, okay? So now, to save your upper body strength, you can do something at ground level while you're not on the ladder to make your life easier. After hanging the sheet and getting it in the general area where you know it's supposed to go, check to see that your horizontal repeat is correct. What do I mean? You see the laser line, right? This is key. You want to do a good job? This is a waiting room where people are going to be buying wallpaper. People, they know what to look for. If they see an O at a certain level, they're going to be looking six feet away to see if the O is at the same level. The more, the bigger the, um, pattern is the more glaring your error is as well. Okay, so having said that, let's go to a reference point. Pick a reference point. So you see the estimate for the completion, you see this paragraph here. If we go down, our laser line is above the word treasury. See that word treasury there? So our laser line is just, a, it's on the next line. So this is the end of the paragraph. It's more easy to remember when I get over there. So treasury, the estimate for the completion. I'm going to go over there and see if my laser line is above treasury. Okay, let's see. Let's go over there. The estimate. Let's see how are we doing. By the way, this is not an easy pattern to find. It's just not. See, I'm, I'm annoyed because I can't find it. <sighs> the estimate. Okay, so we're looking at around here. Okay, here we go. Okay, so here's here's the estimate, right? The estimate, and let's go down and see where our laser line is. Look at that. We just have to move it up a hair. You, you see the importance of that. Can you just move back, cameraman? Okay. It's very important. Okay. Now we know that we're level in the midsection. Now we have to make sure we're level at the bottom and at the top. Okay, see you on the next frame.
The drop ceiling has a metallic trim that goes 5 sixteenths of an inch from the drop panels down onto the wall. So we don't want to, we want to cover them with wallpaper, but I'm melting the wallpaper into the groove of that cap trim so that when it dries, it's in there. Uh, the rest of the wall doesn't have it. So we're going to cover it so that the wall all looks the same. The purpose of this frame of the video is to treat on the subject of obtuse angles or even a right angle for that matter, but an outside obtuse angle. A couple of things to consider. One, it may not, it may knock off your, your plumb line and you have to play with it if it does. Because there's nothing else you can do. So this is our obtuse angle. The first thing we want to do is to make sure we don't have a fat corner. And so what I'm going to do is heat this area up several inches from the corner on this side, several on this side, so that I can thin out the wallpaper. When you heat it up, it kind of gets a little thinner because I don't want it going back after I leave overnight. And then it, it stretches and then it constricts and becomes fat. So you have to stretch it out and you leave it in place and the heat helps you do that. The other thing, underneath the obtuse angle on the wall, you want to put a clay-based super tacky paste. And so you can get that uh, from various places. If you go on Amazon, you can find um, super tack. When the company that sells it starts paying me to advertise, I'll mention their name. Anyway, I'm gonna heat it up. Now with a sticky hand, and this wallpaper shouldn't be wet, I'm going to now stretch it by pulling this side and making the wallpaper really adhere to this corner. If you don't do this, you will have a fat corner. See all the space here? All the wallpaper, I mean. If you leave that there, it sits in that corner and air collects underneath it. Air.
just to show you the difference, if you can now bring them in and just show them the corner and several feet, several inches on each side of it, how nice and tight that corner is. You see there's no air underneath that corner. You can't get this wrong. If you're off on the corner, you'll never be able to fix it with commercial vinyl. I've done it with grass cloth, I have a video on it, but with commercial vinyl, you pretty much have to do surgery on it, slice it on one side, the least conspicuous side, overlap it, and trim. That's the only way to fix it, but do it right and you won't have to fix it. I'm gonna do the rest of it, I'll see you on the next frame. edit it for Instagram. Just keep going. It's a good video. A very good video for Instagram. Show them up close. All right, nice. Can't be Did you?
the inside corner is just as important that the wallpaper be a little thinner there when it's applied, when it's installed, so that it gets into that corner and stays there. You don't want to put cold vinyl, and I do mean cold, um, in the corner and expect it to stay. If you're using a plastic smoother, notice where I'm applying the heat. Several inches below, right? What will happen is your plastic smoother will melt and leave a residue of melted plastic on your vinyl and it's can't get it off. So you want to trail behind your heat with your applicator so that you don't melt it, melt the plastic onto the vinyl. Okay, whenever you're wrapping around corners or coming around an inside corner, your wallpaper must yield to the lack of plumb, which is the consequence of the corner's lack of plumb. If you look on my forward edge, you see a level line, a plumb line. But if you look in my corner, you will see a disproportionate overlap, starting out thick on the bottom. Can I see that up close? Can I see this overlap? And it gets thinner as we go up. See how thick it is on the bottom? We're at 5 sixteenths of an inch here. And we get thinner as we go up because our lack of plumb becomes less manifested at the top. Consequently, we're going to have more to trim at the bottom than we will at the top. Because our corner, if you were to look from an aerial view is not like this, it's sort of like this. So the plaster is sticking out differently in the corner at the bottom than at the top. So in order to keep a straight forward edge, I have to trim it. and we lose some wallpaper. Now with this pattern, you're not going to be able to tell. She's gonna get back with me on Wednesday, on Monday, and then I'll be able to tell you what you did. Unless somebody sitting in this waiting area starts to read the articles on this wallpaper which is unlikely. But that's the only way they'd be able to tell. Okay. Is normal at the top. It's perfect.
perfect. But we have a large overlap at the bottom. So we'll be trimming it. And so I'm gonna heat it up so that it's easy to trim. Here's why. Do you think it would be easier we only want to cut the overlap we want to leave the underlap in place if we cut them both our corner is going to show the paint underneath so we want to make it thin with the heat and only cut with a gentle hand, the top layer. <clears throat> Wish me luck. I'm just going through the top layer here. If I go through the bottom, it's already overlapped into the corner. We learned that in the beginning of the video. So if you look, it's thin in this hand, right? And look how thicker it gets over here. So when you when you cut through this seam, you want to go with a gentle hand so you're only penetrating the top layer. If you go through the bottom, you'll make it work. It'll just be a harder job. Okay, that's our seam. I'm gonna clean it up, and then we're gonna move on to the next frame. I'll see you then. The fake out. We started over here. The last piece, when we joined the first to the last. Now, I didn't wanna waste all this product and drape a piece of waste over this doorway only to throw it in the garbage. So what I did was I started two inches and a half over the doorway, figuring that I would have enough wallpaper to play with to make my fake out or to make my kill point. And so now I'm going to join the natural edge of the left side of this sheet with the right side of this sheet and we'll get a natural connection but we're going to have to do a fake out on the left side fake out meaning we're going to make it look like it's supposed to be there but of course when you're hanging a pattern you have to finish an end somewhere that's not going to match up but i went to the colgan university school of wallpapering and they taught me how to do this at the school so let me share with you what Professor Colgan taught me when I was in school. You know, I tell that to my customers. Um, yeah, I was voted the number one wallpaper installer in the state of Florida. And they go, wow, and I say, by my wife and children. And I never catch it, and I just, I let it go. 
because I feel bad telling them, ma'am, I was joking, and because they, they would feel silly. So I just let it go. Okay, now we're gonna get this piece out of the way, right? Okay, I'm sorry. So now we have a manageable piece left over. Now you can see my fake out, right? You can see where the first piece is meeting the last. Now we have, like I said, a natural connection here. This is supposed to be. And so we're good here. We're good. But we're not good on the left. <sighs> But we will be. Okay. Just trim the top now. Okay, now. We're talking. Very nice. Very nice. Okay, so we'll try to do it quickly. And so you can see where I'm gonna do my double cut right through the twilight zone through the black, this way, there's very little chance of messing this up. Okay, that's one. That's my natural edge. Not a problem there. That was to be expected. Okay, so now we have our edge over here. So let's how we'll, let's see. And this is uh, by no means a difficult kill point. We're not dealing with flowers and trees. We're dealing with written words that are easy to put together. Okay, so this is, if you can come on my left cameraman. We have all of this to play with. From the end of this paper all the way over. So now, where do you think I should kill it? Hmm. My black lines don't meet up with any other black lines. So here's what I'd like to do. You see this text here? I would like to somehow make it look like it matches this text here. And so that's what I'm going to do. So... I get my new blade. Yeah, it's my only option here. It's my only option. So we're gonna come right down a paragraph, okay? It's the only thing I can do. So now let's see how it looks. It's all about how it looks in the end. That really determines how you do your kill point. And if your kill point doesn't look good, you should have bottles of wine in your car that are closed, of course, that you give to your customers 
before they check out your work. Hopefully they have a glass of wine. And then you ask them uh, to obey the four foot rule, which is don't come closer than four feet until you get paid. And then they can do whatever they want. So now, I think you would agree that my kill point was successful. Remember, it's not always going to be perfect because you're joining two pieces of wallpaper that don't match, but you're skilled and you've come up with different plans. And now you would agree that it's, it's symmetrical and it's also 90 degree, meaning it's squared off. This, the writing is, it's correct. It's parallel with each other. And that's what counts when you're standing at the entrance of this room. And you'll see it at the end of the video, what I'm talking about. Okay, so that's one kill point. And then I decided not to waste another long strip of this wallpaper. So I did, I chose to do two kill points so that I wouldn't waste the wallpaper. So, hey, that looks pretty good. Okay, okay, so let's do that. And we're gonna take a random piece of wallpaper here. And we're gonna make it look like it fits. Okay. Now, if you have a, an, a, an atypical situation where it really doesn't look good, call your customer and this always works. And it doesn't happen to me, but if it happens to you, it could happen to me. Say, ma'am, I, I have to show you what's going on here and uh, incorporate their advice and um, they won't be displeased. It's when you don't tell them and you have an issue then they're very unhappy. But when you incorporate their advice into how you go about the kill point, you won't have a problem because they understand what's happening. Okay? So what is the consideration here? Our written, typewritten words have to be level and they should be consistent with the rest of the writing. And so, let's see if they are. Very good. Okay. So I have what appears to be written material. Now, let's see if I can somehow cut through that black. Okay, I have a black over here. This is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna cut through the black on, on my left, to the left of your screen. And I'm gonna try, I can't do it over here. That's all right, let's see how this goes. Okay. Very nice. Now,